welcome to today's video. As you've noticed, my Mac is gone, it died, so I have to do with other means to make my videos this from this moment on, but we will do. Uh, so it's possible I may sound a bit different in my narration, but I guess it will be fine. Anyway, in today's video, I will be reviewing the, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers from Kuretake. And they are so much fun. Anyway, let's get going to the tutorial. Uh, I mean video. <laughs> So, in today's video, I will be reviewing the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Uh, this will be totally based on my, my experience with them. I'm not paid by them to do this video, so just so you know. Uh, I got the, the set of 60, because I just like to have choice and I'm crazy. So, yeah. Uh, but I got them quite quite cheap on, on eBay from a Japanese seller, at least for half the price I would have had to pay over here in the Netherlands, so yeah, I guess I still got a deal. Um, so a set of 60, this is what a pen looks like, uh, it looks kind of basic, from far away you would even think of them as a as a kitty thing or something, they don't really look spectacular in design, but the way they work, they're spectacular. I can tell you, um, they are they are water based, water soluble, so they're nothing like alcohol based markers such as Copics or or Spectrum Noirs or Pro markers. So you can't compare them with that. They're uh, I believe the Spectrum Noir do have water soluble ones, but they're more comparable to the Tombow dual brush markers, I suppose. They are not refillable, that's a shame, but I heard from other people who use this, these markers that they last quite a long time, so that's a yay, because they are quite pricey though, but from what I can tell from the piece I did with them, they are really worth it. They are so cool. I was, I'm still excited about these. It's just... Wah. Anyway, what makes these special? At first sight, you'd think it's a normal brush tip thingy. I don't know if it wants to focus or not. I guess not. Anyway, but yeah, it's this is just a real, like, I think, nylon brush. It just has individual hairs, so it really looks, it works like a calligraphy brush. And look at the color that comes off, it's really, really bright. And so, yeah, you can do really fine fe details with just a tip of this. And if you press harder, you get these white, broad strokes. Uh, I made a little color chart just so you can see what's in the set and how the colors look and you know it looks a bit dark here so yeah you can tell the colors are really bright really vivid and they dissolve really well and yeah they're just awesome <laughs> I just love them so much really um, yeah so let's get on with the tutorial then I start off by roughly sketching out my design, starting off with basic shapes to create my pose and composition. At this point I do not bother to work on details yet. Also sorry for my hair being in the way. <laughs> How that, now that I got my basics sketched out, I started with some details to give the rough sketch some more character, character by giving it eyes and more feline features. I'm using a water soluble graphite stick so that the sketch won't be visible anymore after watercolors have been applied. Now that the sketch is done, I trace it over with my sepia sakura brush pen to get a nice clean line art. Of course, if you don't want lines in your artwork, you can't skip this part. I chose for a brush pen just to give it a try because I had not used the brush pen for my line art before. 
but I found that you can get really nice thin lines when you're using the tip of the pen and a light hand. And if you press a bit harder you get broader lines. It takes a bit of practice, but you can get really nice results that way. By switching from thin to thick lines in the right places you can get a very playful and dynamic line art. Now this first step for the background will look very odd, but it was an experimental idea I had also to test how well they would dissolve once activated with water. So bear with me. As you can see these markers dissolve very well once I misted some water over them and leave no marks behind. So at this point I got even more excited over these markers. I also used some brusho on top of them to create some extra use for the background. Absolutely zero plan here, but 100% messing around and having fun. With watercolors, I let the painting paint itself most of the time. It's just such a fun medium. Now that I'm happy with the colors and textures of the background, I'm using a white calligraphy ink to draw some fun white trees to create a kind of dreamy or fantasy atmosphere. You could also achieve this by using masking fluid before you paint the background to mask the areas you want to keep white. But at the moment I'm out of the stuff so figured I'd do it this way. It's very important to tape down your drawing when you work with wet media. This way the paper dries back into shape after it warped. Now that I got my trees down I get to one of my favorite parts. Splatters! I'm using one brush loaded with lots of ink and tap it onto a barrel of another brush to get this effect. You can also use a toothbrush for this. In this case I thought it would be fun to create leaves this way. At this point the cat looks horrid with all those blotches of color. I could have prevented this by using mask and film, but I was too lazy and the character is going to be very dark of color, so it worked me little. Would it have been a lighter character, I would have gone through the trouble to mask her off. Now I am using a white gel pen to draw out some smaller branches on the trees to make them look more refined. Moving on to the cat, I'm going to test how well the markers blend with each other and if they work with salt to get these fun textures. I start off to block in her basic color, sparing her facial light markings and the highlights on her fur. Then I take a lighter blue color to work the darker color towards the lighter areas to create a gradient transition of colors. And again these markers perform the way I hoped they would. They blend together really well and you can lift the darker color with the lighter brush pen a bit too. Then I thought I'd try blending the colors with my Tombow Dual Brush Blender and that too works wonderfully, giving me even more options to blend with them. Then I got out a bright pink to fill in some highlights on her head to bring back the background colors into the cat to make her one with it, just so her presence in the picture feels more natural and less cut and paste. Then I used the same pink to layer on top of the blue-green to get cool purple shadows and again they blend wonderfully. I also noticed how vibrant the colors came out of the pen and don't change much once dried. Just see how wonderfully that pink blends with the blue. The gradient effects you can get with these pens is really great. Adding some more shadow layers with a dark pink color. I think for this piece I only used six different colors of these markers. So even though I like to get as much colors as possible, just because I like to have choice, you can get a whole lot done with just a couple of them. So if you don't have much to spend, you will, ha be, you will be fine with just a couple of colors. You may have noticed already, but I did the salt test when the camera was off and it worked really well. The best way to get it to work with these markers is to wet some spots where you want the textures and sprinkle some kitchen salt on that spot, then wait for it to dry.
Now that I feel her head is done, I go back in with a white gel pen and draw her whiskers out. I could leave this for last, but I easily forget about these details in all of my excitement, so I do them earlier. So now for her neck, I basically repeat what I did on her head, putting the base color down and make light gradients by blending light blue and light bright pink where the highlights are at. Then draw in the shadows and some fur details with dark pink and a dark blue. I will put the exact color names and materials I used in the video description if you would like to look it up. Then for the body I repeat the whole process again and will add some more salt to create a texture that could pass for fur. So after and even while drawing this picture with the zigs, I can say that they blew me away. They were just that awesome. They are super vibrant, blend amazingly well with each other and mix great to get more color variations. They dissolve without leaving marks behind and look just like a watercolor paint when you wet them. The salt technique works like a charm and because of the fine brush you can get very fine details but at the same time very wide strokes so filling in a big area wasn't a problem either. So yeah, I'm totally loving these and can't wait to do another project with them. So I can wholeheartedly recommend these if you are into watercolors or mixed media art. Thank you all for watching, please subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos and hopefully see you in my next video.